Welcome to the MX Podcast featuring Dan Roberts, the female fitness, well-being and holistic lifestyle show that helps you get the mind of an athlete and body of your dreams. Okay, welcome to episode number four. Today, I'm joined by the incredible Ashley Borden. Now, Ashley is one of LA's top trainers with over 35,000 hours of coaching experience, which is shitloads. Well done, Ashley. Um, mm. She's also a regular fitness expert on TV, including Revenge Body with Chloe Kardashian. And she's the creator of the App Fit app, an author, and she's very cool. And I'm very honored that she's on this show. So Aww. thank you. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. I like doing that live Insta chat we did a couple of weeks ago. You're funny. It was fun. You know, it's weird. Like I said, it. I felt like, oh, wait, we haven't met. That's what's so weird about Instagram and all this. Like, I feel like you and I have met and we've been friends for a while. It's great. <laughs> Within 10 minutes, you're like, hey, how come you're not sleeping with your clients? And what's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Like, no one's ever asked me that before. So, Well, you uh, know me. I am very, <laughs> I'm very direct. And, uh, you know, we, I think we were talking about that's how you had some longevity also in the business because you weren't sleeping with all your clients. Yeah. So business tip for anyone listening, don't sleep with clients. Except, <laughs> except if you're going to, uh, then the ex- marry them. <laughs> yeah. yeah <okay. laughs> all right. So... What this podcast is all about is basically I take a different theme of fitness and well-being every week and I explore it. Sometimes it's me just talking and occasionally I have expert guests like yourself to just to go a little bit more deeper and more detail. Today, I want to talk about female fitness and female well-being. So you are an expert in that. But just to give everyone a bit of context, um, can we know a little bit more about you? Like just a little bit about your journey, how you got into fitness, how you got into coaching. Oh, sure. Well, so I have been training now. I, I think you said 35,000. I think it's been almost 40,000 hours that I've been working with uh, oh, humans. <laughs> Come on, Dan, give me that extra 5,000 hours. Um, but I really, I grew up around uh, fitness and health and all that. My, my mother owned a health food store, which was traumatizing in itself. Just kidding. But um, I did grow up in that. And then I grew up in my my father owned sporting goods stores. And my mother was a runner. My dad was really fit and into weightlifting. And so I kind of, I grew up around it, not knowing that this wasn't the norm. Mm-hmm. Um, and for myself though, I, I really struggled with um, food issues and stuff when I was younger, just because the way it was introduced to me was so severe, where it was like, you are having no sugar, you are not doing this, you're not doing that. And it kind of went the other way for me. And I ended up having a horrible eating disorder. Um, But I came out of the other side of that, knowing that I really, really, really wanted to work with people for them to understand that they can also find like the same balance with exercise and nutrition and food and feel fit, but not feel like a freaking psychopath. Like I felt for some (laughs) people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I just gave you the most general way that I grew up, but just being exposed to it, I didn't know any different. It was like when I was young, my dad bought me, uh, Rachel McLish bodybuilding book. And I don't know if you know who that is, but she was like the first natural bodybuilder, um, in, in the U S and he gave me this book. I think it was seven. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, you know, he had, a, he had some issues relating with uh, young girls, but, and it was the first thing I looked at. And I remember I have, I still think I still have this book, but it, I was exposed to like this weightlifting stuff. I didn't quite understand what it was, but I was exposed to it so young and I was doing it, but I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and it really wasn't until I got into recovery and started really realizing that strength training is healing. You know, strength training is healing on so many levels. It it should be mandatory in any treatment center that everyone does strength training. Forget the cardio, the strength training. So that, you know, was really my basis for wanting to work with people and everybody. Because I felt like no one ever took the time with me to explain like, well, this is how you can find this healthy, sane balance. Um, everything was so extreme. And and I didn't feel athletic growing up, even though I was a dancer, I didn't feel like an athlete. A da- I mean, I am not saying that dancers are not athletes, but it's a completely different modality than um, biomechanics of athleticism. And so I felt really unathletic growing up. Um, and so 
when I became a trainer, it was like, I guess subconsciously what I wanted to do was to be that to people, to be to people what I didn't have, like teach them how to move correctly. No question is dumb. Um, no movement pattern. You're an idiot that you can't do it because I couldn't do it. So it really was just taking my own experience of what I wish I had when I was growing up and learning how to be athletic. And that's basically what I give all my clients now. I love that. So when you started being a trainer, what was that first year or so like? Were you in LA? I was, yeah. So I, I moved, um, I, I was in LA, I think it was 18. And, um, I moved from Chicago. It's where I'm from. And I had no idea what I was doing, Dan. I didn't know that I I did not go to college. Um, I didn't know that this was an option that I could do for a living. And I was, uh, I was at gold gym in Hollywood and I would, I was lifting and, um, I remember I would always wear like a half shirt and I had a six pack. I still do. And, um, but that was like, People were coming up, girls, women were coming up to me and asking like, oh my God, how'd you get your six pack? And I was just like, I don't know, working out. And a guy I was dating was a trainer. And I'll never forget this. He was like, Ashley, I have people paying me 10 sessions up front to work out. And I was like, what? <laughs> I, I was like, what? And I remember this guy was making like $80 an hour. I thought it was insane. So I basically just like copied his, what he was doing. Um, he had a waiver. And uh, so uh, it was so rudimentary the way I started. And I always say I kind of started on the prison yard. Like I did not know what I was really doing. I was just working and I worked, I didn't know how to do my schedule. I didn't know how to say no. I worked 12 to 14 hours a day when I started working because I was like, if I said no to anyone, no one would ever... And no one would ever come back to me, you know? So it took me, I'd, I'd say the first 10 years of me training was like just, uh, I just working like a maniac. And that's all I did for 10 years is I worked so hard and I did it the wrong way. I feel like that's why I'm, you know, now getting back. Off the you know but, I mean, I think it's, everyone wants shortcuts nowadays. I mean, I, I mean, I not too different background. Well, I just put a lot of hours in. You know, and I, you can't get around that. When you put the hours in, you learn and you, you really understand people because you're working with real people on a daily basis. So I think it's the best way of getting good. Totally. And Dan, it's like, it's like for us, right? We work with people. Like, here's what I, I think people forget. You are trusting your life with me. I could kill you easily, or paralyze you or injure you if I'm training you the wrong way. 100% being serious. And people tend to really take it for granted that they're like letting anybody be in charge of their freaking body. You mm -hmm. know, I've been injured. So I know what it's like to have not somebody paying attention or not know what they're doing or load too much weight or not be able to cue you the right way. And the experience of training people, and it's like a doctor, right? I'm not saying I'm a doctor, but you want to go to somebody and it's their first day and they've never been with a person and they've just been with a book. Yeah, also, I mean, it's, also right? psychologically as well. I mean, if someone's got problems with eating or self-esteem, you could say one phrase which triggers someone into a oh. nightmare of self-loathing. Oh. So it's a huge responsibility. I'm with you on that. You know, it's interesting. I, I remember I had a client that I trained for many years. He was male. He was very sensitive to his body issues. And he and I had lost 40 pounds, right? He was doing great. I am very aware of Every single word I say to my client, nothing that flies out of my mouth is by accident. And so I was very conscious of how I would say things to him. I would say, you know, you look great and focus on his strength. I had a, a trainer come in and sub him when I was gone, this guy who was doing boxing with him. And my client had told him, I felt really good because I have just lost 40 pounds. And this boxing instructor said to him, yeah, you have another 15 to go. Oh, what a dick. So... Let me just tell you the spiral that it threw my client into, the alcohol drinking spiral it threw him into. I had to step in. We had, and I'm not I'm not kidding. I had to fire him. I had to explain to the guy what he did. I had to unravel all of the mental work I had done with this client for so long. And so, you know, I just think people don't quite understand all the levels that go into being a freaking trainer that is beyond just your ability to program a workout. Yeah. 
Right. It's you want to have some longevity and you want to have a client last longer than a day. So let me ask you this, because you've, you've been in industry a long time and I want people to get some sort of practical insights. How have, yeah. how have your kind of methods of training, I know your philosophy hasn't really changed that much because you've come into it in a really empathetic mm-hmm. way to help people, but over the years, I mean, you've stayed kind of on top of the game for a long time, which is so rare, particularly in LA, but generally in the fitness industry, you have to keep on changing and innovating and you have to stay current because you can't get away with just doing burpees and press-ups like in the 80s. We have to right. keep on going. So how has your advice changed over the years, like technically? Wise? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you, my life, it's, it's like kind of like look, look at my career at like different big phases of when things change or happen, right? And about 10 years ago, I decided to hire uh, my coach to train me because I had an injured ankle and I did not have it in me to train myself anymore. I was like, I need somebody to help me and push me and do that. So I try. I, I hired my coach, Brian Redfern, who also happens to be my now my the co. Uh, he was an app fit, right? Yeah, he's my co uh, creator for AB Fit app, okay. and um, Brian was the first person that really introduced barbell work to me. So I had not been romantic with a barbell until about you know. 10 or 12 years ago. And I started doing barbell work. And Dan, I was like, what is happening with my body? It was insane. And also 10 years ago, I decided I was not going to focus on my aesthetics anymore. And that is what has changed with the way I train people too. I'm like, look at the focus of what we're doing is getting under a barbell is understanding heavier lifting. So you understand what a hormone release is for your body, right? When we understand like Having a barbell on my body not only changed me mentally because I feel so much stronger, um, aesthetically it changed me without me like trying. It was like all of a sudden I had a freaking like a real six pack where I wasn't like trying to get a six pack. You know what I mean? Because my 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 torso was contract my 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 abdominal wall was contracting around my spine. Yeah, uh, and lifting heavier weights. So that change of how I was programming people's training and using a barbell. I did not use a barbell and uh, truly understand what I was doing with a barbell until probably like 10 years ago. Um, And from me having a coach, it changed the way that I coached people because I am a much, uh, I guess I would say tougher coach, but I'm also like it, you know how it is. It's like, I, it's all, it all depends on where we are in the workout and how long I've known you and when you need to turn it on, when you need to push it back, when you need to do that. So I'd say the barbell really changed my life with my intensity of how I work, um, with the programming of how I work. Um, it may, I finally feel like I'm an athlete. I Olympic lift. I started doing jujitsu when I was 40. That changed my life too. Um, I just feel much more capable and confident now, um, starting when I was in my forties. I actually, Dan, I don't even remember how the hell I was training before <laughs> I was 40. Like, I don't even remember. What were so, they doing? With, with a barbell. So you said about Olympic lifting, but what, what kind of are the, your go-to exercises for yourself? Okay. So with a barbell? I don't teach just tech, you know, for the record, I don't teach Olympic lifting to my clients. I don't feel that my clients need to learn how to snatch a barbell and all that. I mean, they should learn how to clean a barbell from the floor, but they don't need to snatch a barbell. Um, I pretty pretty, good yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, unless it's, unless they're, and if they were Olympic lifters in the Olympics doing that, they wouldn't be training with me. You know what I mean? I'm not the expert in Olympic lifting, but I think, you know, there's a time and a place for cleaning the barbell and using maybe dumbbells for snatching and all that. Um, but wait, I'm sorry. What was your question? <laughs> asking what, what exercises, because not everyone listening knows. Oh, what okay. All types of exercises so, are. Okay. So I would say like, you know, a lot, so a lot of my programs with my AB fit app programs are all uh, programmed around barbell work, dumbbell work, gym work, um, and uh, uh, stuff in the gym. So for me, mm-hmm. the major moves that I love, I love strict pressing, which is like, you know, strict pressing above the head. I love back squats. I love front squats. I love bench press, um, deadlifting. I love deadlifting. Um, you know, a lot of uh, power lifting moves I love, which is, you know, bench press, back squat, deadlift. All of those are so um, effective you know, when you're doing it correctly. So 
just have you know using a bar. And it's funny because here at my house, we built, uh, we we installed a uh, a rack, and we so, uh, so cool. Yeah, this one we have a rack behind me, but we all, <laughs> but we only have a forty five pound bar. So I've been just you know not working with a thirty five pound bar, I've been working with a forty five pound bar. So I've gotten the, all of a sudden a lot stronger very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and doing that. But, you know, I, I, all my clients, um, when I'm explaining them and teaching them that, that is what I feel has changed is that I really explain why we're doing what we're doing. Because mm -hmm. when you understand why lifting heavy is effective and important and healthy for your body, heavy in, 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 uh, relation to anybody's strength, then women especially are much more apt to be like, Oh, Oh, that's why we lift heavier is because of this hormone release and because, oh, I get more of a core, harder core and I, and I have lower body fat and like, oh, okay, that wasn't explained to me. And that's, I guess that's my philosophy too for me is like when you explain to me why we're doing what we're doing, I'm there, yes. I'm down. But when, you know. So do you still think there's a debate in terms of women's fitness? Because I think nowadays, don't we all know that weights are good? <laughs> you or do you think this? Well, do you, do you think there is still a debate or? Well, I, I, I offend a lot of women when I say this, but I feel like it's true. I, when people are like, I don't want to get bulky. That's really code for, I don't want to work hard and I'm a little lazy. Um, hmm. you know, with I maybe, maybe a couple of trainers, um, who are kind of well-known, who have different philosophies. Who, for example, like Tracy Anderson, who believes that you shouldn't lift more than three pounds. Right. So I guess when there's, uh, <laughs> Notice the silence. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't consider Tracy Anderson a trainer. I consider her a dance instructor. Yeah, you know, but, um, but she's to other people see her as a trainer. And there are people out there who recommend give advice which doesn't actually adhere to any science, but because they're popular, that may be not helping the situation. But I think most people are quite intelligent. Don't they? I mean, Honestly. in my opinion, you know, I've, I've always been very opinionated about that stuff because here's what I feel about dance. Uh, like what, I, I don't know what you would categorize Trace. I guess I would categorize her as a dance instructor with using different things to dance with, like, you know, turning the, house, the room up to 400 degrees or like using bands and stuff like that. Um, here's what I tell women about this type of training, right? I call her type of training chasing the dragon. And I'll explain to you what that means. So she's a big proponent of eating very, very, very low calories and training with very light weight and doing incredibly high repetitions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I feel it. I feel it. The problem is a lot of times people don't know what they're feeling, right? And you're feeling uh, your piriformis or you're feeling like actually grinding hip issues or you're feeling your lower back or you're feeling your neck. Um, I don't, it's, and again, this is not based on my opinion. This is based on science, right? High, high volume repetition with very low weight does nothing, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, it does, you're using your muscle a lot, but you're not building muscle. And so you're going to build muscular endurance, which endurance. is pointless. It, yeah. Right, and and also you're going to get lactic, lactic acid tolerance and people like the, the lactic acid burn and they think they're working, but if you, if you just hold like a half squat for five minutes and feel a burn, it's going to do fuck all for you. It, so, right. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that I guarantee you that when you're doing a 150 leg lifts to the side, they're, they're not all good and they're not all the same. <laughs> but the question is, this is what my master trainer taught me, Carl Liss, Why? You need to ask this question with anything you're doing, with any type of training, raise your hand and say, why are we doing this? Hmm. Why? Why am I doing uh, 250 arm things up and down it, with this band? Why? What is this, what is this doing? And here's the thing. I feel like if you, you can't make up a new system, people. There is no new training system to make up, okay? There is not. There is basic science of strength and conditioning, and then there's everybody else trying to make things seem like they have like their own system right, <laughs> to make it something, and that's a sales thing. Um, Tracy, you know, you know, hands, g give her the props. I mean, this girl has opened up all these studios. She has a lot of people who 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 like that, and um, I like to tell people it's like better that you are moving than not doing anything. But the chasing the dragon type of training, this is what happens. You're going to hit a wall. Okay. I don't know. It's going to happen. 
whether it's an injury or it's a, uh, you're not, you, you're, you, your adrenals start to blow out, right? Cause you're eating not enough food. You're overtraining in this weird type of, I don't get it. That's over high volume stuff. And then your adrenals get shot. And then now it's actually a physiological thing. So now your metabolic system is not working well. And now you're starting to gain weight. And now your body's kind of hurting you because the 400 leg lifts that you're doing to the side is not actually strengthening your core or your glutes or and all that stuff. So that's what I mean. It's like you want to you um, be able to do types of exercise that that feed your modalities of what you're doing in life. And when you say don't lift more than three pounds of weight, I'm holding a, I'm holding a water bottle right now that's more than three pounds, okay? I mean, if you're going to the grocery store, I hope the only thing you're buying is some air and <laughs> a bag of carrots because life is more than three pounds of weight. So you want to do stuff that supports your body and movement on a day-to-day -day basis. That's how you don't get injured that's how you stay strong. And this is why you don't have the fluctuation in your weight. My body weight does not fluctuate like crazy yeah. at all because I'm consistent with my strength training and I don't face the dragon. No, I'm, I'm with you. I find it quite tricky to know how to deal with it like emotionally because I do like people moving no matter what. Mm -hmm. But then as a professional coach who's kind of like you, dedicated pretty much my entire career to learning about the science of biomechanics and energy systems and how muscles work, I find that trainers have such a huge responsibility to teach the right way mm -hmm. because it's not just, and, and I do find classes like that and like fun little workouts, they're missing this huge opportunity. People have maybe got like an, three hours a week to exercise. And in that time, you can transform people's bodies. You can help their self-esteem. You can improve confidence. You can improve every function of the body. You can do so many good things. And when you just do like some bad dance steps, mm -hmm. it's like you, you're, you're kind of doing a disservice not just to fellow coaches, but to your to the client. So part of me gets really angry at people like Tracy, but then part of me goes, well, you know what? If people were just doing nothing, it's better to do a shit dance class. Right. Than it is nothing. So I, I never okay. know how to deal but, with it. But I think, I think there's like, okay, so like Simone Delarue, Body by Simone. Like Simone is, yeah. I have a lot of respect for Simone. I think Simone's a great teacher. I like her system. I like she's how like, think she works for Tracy. Uh, she might have, I, maybe, I, it's funny, oh, okay. there's no, like, anywhere that I read any of this. Oh, she used to at the start of her career. She might she, have. And, yeah. and and Simone was a professional dancer as well. Um, but, you know, I Simone was on, on Revenge Body. I've seen her train. She actually uses weights. You know, her, her husband's a, um, a CrossFitter and stuff. So it's like, there is a way and there is a version of being able to incorporate dance and doing that and using heavier strength stuff. I think what upsets me and maybe you too is that I don't like people being duped and I don't like people wasting their money and I feel bad and I feel like the majority of the world is every dollar you spend is important. And I get upset for people who spend their money like you know, maybe buying all this trade. I mean, and by the way, Tracy Anderson's memberships are a fortune. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, they're a fortune. And then I feel bad. Don't make me cry, but I feel bad for people who then don't know any better and they're struggling and they're like, why isn't this working? You know, it worked for Gwyneth Paltrow or whatever. And by yeah, the way, can I, can, I, can, I, can I just say something for, for the record here? You guys, <laughs> who gives a fuck? what works for fucking Gwyneth Paltrow, what works for fucking Jennifer Aniston, it's not you. Yeah. Like, unless it's your identical twin. This is what I tell everybody. Unless it's your identical twin, then you could take a look and see what they're doing and see if that will work for you because you have the exact same genetics. Other than that is the biggest waste of your life to sit and look at whatever somebody else is doing and see how that can work for you. That's also why we, or the public, we have to take responsibility we can't just bitch about trainers maybe using pr or spin or it's like we have to actually be a private critical reasoning google's people's qualifications and their experience and their philosophy and not just believe the pr spin or if they're in a magazine or if they're in a tv show they must be good right so i think the public have to take responsibility as well not just the industry self-regulating and and do you do you look at it like do you know any professional athletes that take tracy's classes no, of course not. Oh. I mean, 
I mean, she, she's considered a joke in amongst my in in London anyway. Well, complete joke. But and that's and so that's what I think is it with you and I. Like when I look at anything in my my career or my fitness, is I think, oh, what would Dan think if he was looking at this? Like I always <laughs> look at it from the view, seriously, from the view of other experts that I have respect for. That because that's who I care about. Looking at my shit is like, what do other experts think about what I'm producing, and is this legitimate? And is this is this right? Is this you know? Um, you know, and I think a lot of, I, I think some people are like, oh, you know, other trainers are being haters because, uh, she's has gyms or whatever, but you know, financial success is not necessarily the barometer for everybody's ultimate goal. My first goal with everybody, is, I mean, my first goal in a general sense is the respect of my peers. That's the most, that's number one before anything. If I had no respect from my peers, I would have a, it, it would be soul crushing for me. So, so what, what kind of train, what trainers or strength coaches do you look up to at the moment with people who may have not heard of? Uh, um, oh, you mean like on Instagram? Just anywhere. Well, I mean, like, so, like my, so, so my initial coach, my, my, my mentor that I had that changed my life. His name is Carl List, K-A-R-L-L-I-S-T. I don't even know if Carl's on Instagram or whatever, but Carl was my mentor. And I studied under him like, you know, I learned, I, I, I he, he was on such another level. I learned so much for him. Um, but then, you know, it's been different uh, phases along the way of my career of what I'm learning. So like an ex-boyfriend that I had that was an excellent, excellent strength and conditioning coach, terrible boyfriend terrible boyfriend, <laughs> but great strength and conditioning coach. And yeah. I learned so much from him with strength and conditioning. His, his name was Justin. Hagen. was, he's still alive. His name is Justin Hagen. Um, okay. he's, I don't think he's training anymore, but, um, yeah. now, I mean, I, 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 I don't off the top of my head cause I follow them, but like, um, let me think of who I'm looking at. For strength and conditioning stuff, I I look at I like to look at Squat University a lot for how they break down all their squat stuff and learning things with that. They have a lot of great programming in there. Um, BJ Godore, but BJ doesn't do strength conditioning. He does like uh, other forms of like hits training and stuff like that. I have to go back. I, I I'm now I'm under. I go back and look at the names of people. Um, I don't know. I I know their Instagram. I don't necessarily know their names. But, you know, if, if I'm looking at Instagram and I'm seeing a corrective thing with a barbell path or like I'm, I'm seeing people writing about Olympic lifting and stuff, that to me is very interesting along with jujitsu. And, you know, I just, I like to look at different. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on Instagram now, actually. If you look for it, there's a lot of really good stuff. A lot of good FC coaches and guys with PhDs in kinesiology sharing how to do lifting. Right, now, really... now I'm looking and I'll see if I can, because I feel bad that I'm not giving the right people their heads up. I mean, I used to follow some, uh, a lot of really good rehab people. Um, oh God, I don't have it in front of me. But uh, I, I do. I mean, I feel like Instagram, for me, I don't look, this is this is something I, a long time ago I stopped doing. I don't follow anybody that makes me feel anything other than inspired and like I'm interested in learning. If It doesn't even matter if it makes sense. If I look at somebody's page and it makes me feel like, what am I doing with my life? I can't follow them. Yeah. Um, which by the way yeah. ha can happen. I'm, I'm, oh my God, I'm not, what am I doing with my life? But, um, I am just, I'm, I, to me, I'm just really more inspired by how heavier strength training, uh, makes me feel. And mm. I'm, I'm it, it's the feeling, you know, it's like, we didn't have, so I didn't have my, I didn't have the, uh, set up with our rack in our house for the first couple months of this pandemic. And, um, I was doing, you know, like I was using dumbbells, body weight stuff. I have a body weight class I teach twice a week called the Body Foundation, which I f love, and that's great. But mm -hmm. when I finally got this rack and we started lifting again, it was like, oh, like the next day when I woke up, I was like, oh, this is what I missed, this feeling. It's a physiological yeah. feeling that you can't replicate with anything else, you know? Um, and so for me, it's like... I really see the correlation between also my mental feeling mentally strong and lifting and doing that, especially right now, you know, and with jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got a nice balance now Yeah, of the strength and coordination and agility. Um, I've got a couple, couple of questions for you. I've also got some questions from people I asked today on like social media. 
if I need questions for you. I had quite a few people asking questions for you, so you're very popular amongst people who follow me. <laughs> but um, I've got a couple first. Yeah. Do you train? Um, do you train men and women differently? I well, I my approach. Well, because it, yeah. to me, it's a men- it's mentally. Like, do I train them differently as far as the programs and how I cue people and I evaluate their body and I look at their feet to see how their arches are and all that? That's all the same. Um, mm-hmm. How I deliver the information to you is different, all depending on the person I'm speaking to and the type of person they are. You know, I mean, if are I'm... Any, are, there any, are there any general differences do you find between men and women? Are there some things you find yourself generally being a bit more inclined to program certain exercises to women or a bit more inclined to avoid certain exercises? Or cause I, I, I do find that. I do find... Um, it depends on the... Really okay, it depends on the person. Like, if I have somebody who's starting with me, if I have a female that's like, you know... Um, every time I lift, I feel bulky in my legs. Like if I hear that, right. Or they have like a shorter muscle belly. Um, I explain to them that I have what I call the magic, uh, combination. And that is called foam roller and Mm -hmm. your weights. And that when you use a foam roller, like I, you know, am so hardcore with my clients using, it is like, oh, okay. So these, this lactic acid buildup is that's all it is. That's making me feel the sausage feeling. And so a a lot of it with women, I feel like I have to explain ahead of time what we're doing. And I also use me as an example. I'm like, look at me. Do I look bulky? I look like I'm, I'm like, I, by the way, can lift more than all of you, you know? And I, and a lot of people assume because I look a certain way that I am not strong, you know, or like, you know, in in that way. But the way way you look actually probably helps with slim women who who don't want to get bulky, they see you clearly strong, but not bulky. Same as me. Right. Clearly not a bodybuilder. So right. I don't really, I know some of my um, strength conditioning friends who are very strong, big guys. Women don't want to hire them at all because they just automatically assume, right. oh my God, he's going to get really bulky. But because you look the way you do, you're probably, own, you're probably going to attract women who trust you and like your body shape anyway. Right. And I, and they feel it, you know, because yeah. to me, it's a feeling thing, right? So I know. You're, I mean, I guess you're, yes. Cause like our first workout that we do is very specific. So I do, I do workouts. So you feel like if the person's coming to me and they're like, I just, I want to work on my arms, which by the way, nobody just tells me, I mean, it doesn't start with you telling me what the program is going to be, but it does start with me listening to you and hearing what you're feeling and what you want to work on and all that. So like what I would do is like, if you started with, if, if you were a female, Dan, and we started and you were like, I want to work on my arms, but so what I would do is I would do my initial workout that I know how to program. So you're going to feel your glutes, your glutes. You're going to feel your core. You are going to feel your arms. I will make sure you feel your arms because you need to, I need that. I need you to hear that I heard you, but then I need to do everything that I need to do so you can feel the rest of your body. So women want to feel their glutes. They want to feel yeah. their core and they want to feel their arms. So yeah, I've never, had, I've never had a girl come to me saying, I really want to work on my calves, get them bigger. I want Yes, certain things, or I want to work on my pet. I want, my so ba- I, I want a like, wider back flare, or what back spread. Yeah, so there are generally, I do find, because a lot of my female clients are models and actresses, nearly all of them are, they generally want to look slim and lean. So generally, it's like thighs a bit smaller, glutes a bit higher, mm-hmm. obliques rather than abs. Usually, my, my clients don't want to have a six-pack, but they do want to have the oblique lines. Right. So, Generally, I do find myself doing the same, similar kind of exercises for my female clients. And males, is generally, they want to look sexy, which in their head is something different. Right. A little bit let me, let me ask you this. What do you, what do you tell somebody if they say to you that I, um, I don't want to get a six-pack? Well, it, uh, well, it depends. I ask them, if someone says to me, I don't want to get a six-pack, I usually say that's fine because it's really hard to get yeah, anyway. That's, that's kind of, you know what I say? I, I go, you know what? Give me a call when you have a six pack. <laughs> Give me a call when all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, ugh, what is this six pack? I want to get rid of it. Call me when that happens. Also, call me when you're too muscular also, okay? Yeah, Not going to happen also, when you hit 30 and 40 and plus to make any of those changes requires like dedication you have to quit your job you have to like you have to work hard you have to be disciplined I'm like, don't worry yeah. don't, don't don't worry 
Don't worry. You're not, it's not going to, you're not going to all of a sudden just become ripped and bulky and have a freaking. I just don't want a muscular six pack. I'm like, don't worry. <laughs> all right. I've got a question for you from um, Ria in London. She asks, um, do you adapt your training to consider your monthly cycles? Oh. So you're. Well, you know, it's funny you say that. I, I, uh, Lisa Maximus, who works with me in uh, my intuitive coaching crew group, she actually talks a lot about that, about um, how your cycle affects how you're lifting. Yeah. Full disclosure, I don't because I am a maniac and I don't have the discipline to be like, okay, well, this month I'm here and then I need to change it because of this. I usually, I'm, I'm so, so connected to how I feel. I really train according to how I feel also. Um, but you definitely need to keep that in consideration because if you have a heavy flow and it's the, and it's your menstrual cycle, you are not going to, this is not the time to do a one rep max. It is not the time to do a heavy, heavy lift because you are just not as strong as you are when we have full blood in our body. So I would say during that time, if it's a heavy flow day and stuff like that, you don't want to be doing stuff that's like major, major lifts because that you do feel a difference. You feel a little depleted. Um, you know, uh, and so I feel like that is, but don't not work out because you're on your cycle. You yeah, it's, want- it's an interesting question. I mean, I've, when I did, when I was sort of heavily involved in S&C, all the textbook stuff was during that, for the first two weeks after menstruation, uh, fo- follicular phase, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Um, then you're more likely to get injured because it's to do with tendons. I can't remember, but I remember reading about it, but I've trained a lot of female athletes and I never actually found anyone having more injuries at that time yeah but i think they're more in tune with their body and as long as you have a good warm-up i mean as long as you're warming up and you're in touch with yourself i don't think it makes personally i don't find it that much of a difference but i'm pleased you said it because i'm a guy so i, yeah, and I mean, if, you, if you're feeling if you're if it's that time of the month and you are friggin bleeding like crazy and you feel like awful don't work out that day you know or, or do go roll out and go for a walk i mean like but you can de- generally feel like, you know, I know men, you don't understand what it feels like to feel like half of your body is gone because you have no energy and you're a half a thermometer yeah. full of blood. Um, but, you know, it does make a difference. So, but definitely don't not work, don't not work out because it's your cycle. Yeah. I think mean, as a coach, I do notice, obviously, when you sort of train, I train most of my clients for like four or five times a week. Mm-hmm. So you get to know them and yes. very quickly you get to know um, when people have, cycles usually in my experience there's some kind of uh, effect psychologically as well so you get to pick up on that as well <laughs> i'm going to be maybe not so tough time to be like hey it's all right you yeah know, just yeah let's just don't you feel nine, yes. dan don't you feel like uh so much of training is all being able to read the room immediately and, and read your client and it's it's also psychological i mean like it's it's, it's, it's all psychological it's, it's, and it's, it's it's also what separates um, trainers who work in the industries we work in. We're both sort of heavily involved in the entertainment industry. That's mm-hmm. completely psychological. It's all about how you can read the room and being appropriate because a lot of trainers don't do that very well and they don't last very long. So mm-hmm. the trainers like you, that longevity, particularly entertainment, understand how to be appropriate. Oh, well, yeah. How to, how so to lead at the right time. Yeah. I mean, that's that's whole, that, that yeah. you can't, you know, it's like I always say to trainers that are like, you know, I want to work in um, entertainment or I want to train celebrities. It's like uh, y- you have to want to work with anybody first, mm. you know, I mean, like you're you should be saying, I want to help everybody. I want to work with anyone. I worked with everyone and anyone. The more experience you have training with everybody, it will make you ready to, to train. Training everybody will make you ready to train anybody. And, I like you that. know, and yeah. if your goal in life is to train a celebrity, it's not going to happen for you. And I will tell you why, because that focus can be smelled about 4,000 miles away and if I were hiring somebody and that's what you told me was that all you wanted to do was train celebrities in your life, you would be the last person I would hire. Mm. Because yeah, it's like, like saying I want to date a model. It's the same bullshit. It's the same. And well, it's all about yourself. Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> the person, the person. And you should want to, you should want to work with everybody, you know, and train, have, have clients, by the way, I mean, if you want to talk about, you want clients with longevity and money, that that's not 
and I'm not saying that celebrities don't have money. I'm just talking about longevity. If you're training a, a person that's not in entertainment, you'll probably have a lot more consistency with this person ongoing because they're not gone and back and on a show and here and yeah. all over the True. place, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but I think for me, the reason why I have longevity in the business is because I don't secretly want to be that celebrity. Yeah. And we talk yeah. about this on your, on your live. Yeah. It's, it's true. I think, I think people can, uh, people are smart. They can, they can tell when people are in it for the right reasons or not. You know, I think it's, it's pretty obvious, you know, if someone's legit and doing things for the right reasons, someone really cares. I think it's, it's very hard to lie about that. Maybe you can do it in a half an hour. You could lie about your personality, but in terms of all the content we produce and uh, just the way you are of clients and reputation, you, you have to kind of, yeah, you have to be honest to yourself, and um, that's why there's natural selection in a way, a little bit. Exactly, and you have, and you have to be a team up. player. Like yeah. I, you really have to be able to work with other people, and if you can't work with other people, you can't work in the entertainment business. Uh, mm. because it's a bunch of different types of people. And if you don't, it's, I'm going back to the same thing again, which is you have to know when to push, pull, turn your light on, dim it down a little bit, be there, not be there, be, be very invested, be a little bit more quiet in the background, be the energy, not, not be the, I mean, like there's so much that goes on. Um, you know, like I remember when I was on tour with Christina Aguilera, um, and this was like b back when I used to train her back, uh, years ago, but, um, we were on the tour bus and uh, we had been tra traveling for a long time and on the bus. And so I, I walked up to the front of the bus to talk to the bus driver because I was like desperate to have conversation with anybody else other than the same eight people that <laughs> we've been with forever. So I went up to the front and I was, we had to pull the curtain back and I was talking to him. And I was asking him like, you know, about the bus and like, has he been, is this his bus? And has he been driving? How does he stay awake and all this stuff? And then the curtain opened up and it was Christina and she came and sat next to me and we were talking with this bus driver. And I remember afterwards she asked me about like, you know, making or talking and small talk with people, you know, and like, like it was, it, it was almost uh, like, because it was almost like when celebrities and all this, it's like people insulate them so much and they're like, no, 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 I'll do it for you. Oh no, no, no I'll go downstairs and get the thing. Oh no, 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 no. You don't have to go talk to the doorman <laughs> at the front. Let, let me do it for you. Uh, yeah. It on yeah. They're completely wrapped in cotton wool and yeah. And not letting them just be a real human. And with Christina, you know, I mean, I, I respected her as my boss and, you know, we were working together and I, I never get it twisted. That's the other thing. I never have it twisted that we were best friends and all that. She was my boss. Um, and this was a great experience that I had, but like in that, in that moment I was telling her, I'm like, well, this is how I talk to people and do this just because I'm curious. And I like to, I always talk to everybody, but it was almost like, to me, because with Christina, I would treat her like a normal person. Yeah. She is a normal person. She just happens to be an entertainer. And this is what I think people get twisted is like, everybody is a normal person. It's just a job that they're doing. So it makes them a little bit different, you know? And by the way, I just went completely off tangent and probably was not even answering the question that you asked. No, that's all right. I was chatting. But, you know, my life. I mean, I, I like working with everybody, but I have found myself in the last sort of like seven, eight years like my, my clients have sort of ended up being entertainment and particularly young people, people in their like early 20s. And mm -hmm. I, I really like it because I feel like I've got um, a really sort of special place because I can be like a big brother to them. Yes. And when people yes. are like so very famous and very young, they I love that. Very yeah. hard, very hard to know how to trust because I, either people want something out of them, either they want to sleep with them or they want to make money off them. And I don't want any of that. I literally yes. just want them to feel good about themselves. So I get a lot of usually my clients open up very quickly to me and open up and they trust me. And I feel in a really privileged position of these very interesting creative people to actually have an input. And it's such a, a privilege to have an input in someone else's life. And it is when you're very rich and famous and young, you can't really bitch and moan about it because no one's going to go, Oh, poor you with your five mm -hmm. million. But I get it. And everyone, everyone has hard times and, you know, and worries and fears, no matter what, how they, um, no matter how they seem on the outside, everyone has problems. And it's like, I feel like I could be like a confidant and I can help them. And, and often in people's little groups, you know, every famous person has about seven or eight people in their little group. Not all of them has their best interest at heart. A lot of them are on staff and they're just, a lot of them behind take advantage. So I feel like I can come in and because I'm not full time to that one client, they're right. just one enough of my PT income, then I don't give a shit if they pay me or not. And this is so, uh, this is exactly, 
you and I are so much alike. And I think you just verbalized the way that that's exactly how I, that, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, but that's, my dogs are barking, but that's exactly <laughs> what I felt like dur during, uh, when I was with Christina is that I, I did feel like, um, I wanted to really help her in that way. Cause I, I, there were so many people around and I really, really d did care about her, uh, as a, as a human, she was very young and had all this responsibility and, and, you know, now she's a mom and I feel like she's probably a great mom because she was a even though she was young, when we, when I started training her, she was still a teenager. I think she's still 18 or 19. So it's, a, and I agree. I love that age because I, I also feel like there aren't an, enough of people like us out there that really do want to take people under their wing in a way that you also like care, hmm. you know, like I love, I, you know, it's funny, the demographic I've been working with a lot are 15 year olds. Really? And yes. And I, uh, 15 year old girls I've been working with a lot. Um, yeah. We had started, my boyfriend and I had started right before the pandemic, we started working, doing self-defense with this group of these 15, between 10 and 15 year old girls and doing jujitsu. And it, Dan, it was like, I'm like, oh, this is what I love it. That's the most impressionable age. So if oh. you can get in there for like a 13 year old where you can actually have such a huge impact the rest of their life. Oh, it is so amazing. And so with these, so we obviously we can't right now, we're not doing jujitsu together, but a lot of these girls ch uh, changed over to doing strength training with me during this time. So we're doing it virtually. And I mean, girls, some, one of the girls, she's on her way to school. We're still going to be doing it. We do it at, you know, we do this uh, on zoom, but yeah. it has been I love it. I mean, I love that age is like my jam because I feel like also if I had had that kind of real guidance at 15 or 16 with, a, you know, somebody actually, now that I think about it, there was a mom that I used to look at when I was in, when I was about four, 15 or 16. Oh my God, Dan, we're having a therapy session. I'm realizing <laughs> this. And her, she uh, was a mom of a boyfriend I had in high school who was in karate. She was a black belt in karate. And um, she also would lift in her basement. They had a, a gym in their basement. And I thought she was just the freaking coolest thing ever. And she had like these ripped muscles and she was a mom. And I, I mean, not a mom, but I still thought it was so cool. And I just love that I'm able to work with girls at this age. And also then they get, cause you know, it's such a, at that age, it's so word of mouth and clicky. And then they're telling their friends and I'm very aware of the words and the verbiage that I use too, which is I constantly talk about their strength. I say, Oh, look who's capable. Yeah. Look who's giving me a capable bush up over here. And I focus on that their goals of like, all right, what do you guys want to focus on? Pull-ups, push-ups. We don't talk about uh, weight. Yeah. yeah, weights, looks, calories. Nope, we don't talk about that. We talk about, I'm like, uh, excuse me, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I see a six pack coming in. I see us. So maybe in that way, but we don't, we do not talk about, it. we're not in this for aesthetics. And the aesthetics is like the secondary great thing that's a part of it. And so- that is really my focus with these younger girls too, is like getting them really into the strength portion of it and then getting them back into jujitsu. Just to jump in there. Well, like yep. I said, a lot of my clients, so for women in their early 20s, a lot of them are models and actresses. I make a point of never, ever giving them a compliment about their looks, ever, because they hear that shit all the time. It doesn't mean yes. anything. And I don't want to reward that kind of behavior because it's yes. not important. Not important at all, and it's like it's. If I say, "Oh, you're looking good today," it just like it misses the whole point of what we're trying to do. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like yes. You know, get past that. You know, and also the things I write, like methodology X and other programs, like your AB programs. I'm really careful of the words I use, and there's no mention of how many calories you burn in an hour. That I, I don't talk about when we talk about looks. I'm very sort of careful, saying, "Hey, sometimes you have to." Like when I work with models, I say, "Look, you have to sometimes." take a step back and be disassociated and see yourself at work you're this thing you can sculpt and you have to look a certain way and get these inches right. to work and that's all work at when you're outside of work you can't think like that it will mess you up so you have you know how to right. actually deal with working in industry where they we are judged by how you look and we, we live in a world where we're judged by how we look so you can't completely avoid it right. you can't say hey, it matter at all what you look like because the world we live in now it does matter a little bit what you look like well, right. so you're not going to go to a dentist whose teeth are falling out. 
Yeah, exactly. And you, you do have to explain a little bit. If you are an actress, then how you look is a part of your brand. So you do have to help that. But I think as trainers, we can help them get exactly the results we want without obsessing about it. Well, we can obsess. We can get them excited by how strong they're getting. But in the background, we're going, hey, if they do like manage to get four pull-ups, then their biceps will be just toned enough. But if they can do 12 right. pull-ups, they'll probably be too bulky, so let's stop at four. But we don't need to tell them that. We can just know that in the background and our programming is affected by the end result but we can just get them excited by the process of getting fit and getting strong right and that's, and that's what and, and that's what I tell a lot of actresses I work with and I'm like I'm like here's the thing if we can stay consistent with your strength training right and you stay focused with a strength training program you won't have this constant fluctuation of having, oh, I got, I got a job. I got to get back in shape. All right, now I'm not in shape. Oh, I got a job. I'm back in shape, which by the way, stops working when you basically hit 30. Your body, <laughs> you cannot start doing this. I'm going to get in shape. I'm not in shape. I'm going to get in shape again for this. I'm not going to get in shape. It's like better to stay consistently. Probably 90s bodybuilding view of training, which still prevails a little bit like on season, off season, but you can't leave, even in bodybuilding, we don't do that nowadays. It's all you have to sort of be in shape. Well, it makes sense to be in shape all year round because right. you want to feel good or you don't want to feel good just on certain points, like just when you get married or just when you hit a birthday or just for some right. holiday. Exactly. And like have a consistent, I always say to people, I'm like, have a consistent baseline of what your no of what your non-negotiables are for your fitness life, right? So like if your baseline is I am working out, I'm lifting four days a week, it's not negotiable. Anything mm. else around that, you can, if you want to do Zumba, if you want to do a spin class, you want to do this or you want to do, then fine, you can work th- around that. But I always say to my clients and my philosophy is like your strength training are, are your three to four meals a day. I mean, uh, a week. Yeah. You know? So like if you're even doing three times a week of your strength training minimally, then anything else around that is like a side dish. Let me ask you a question. This isn't for the podcast. It's more for me. Actually, yeah. this is all for me, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe one person will listen, but I'm doing it mainly because I just want to talk to you. I'm but I, I, know you, I know you train a lot of actors. We have trained a lot of actors, yeah. and you currently as well. What I try and do when, they're, when I'm training for a role, it's very easy because I usually, usually have very restricted time, and we just have to get it done no matter what. But I train a lot of actors who aren't training for a role, and they're just sort of um, not maintaining, but we're not training for a specific purpose. So when I'm training them, I try to get them about sort of like three weeks away from perfect. So I don't kill them, but I'm usually training like sort of 85% level, right. which is hard. But I don't try and aim for 100% because that's because when you go for 100%, like we do for a film, they just get wiped out and they need to take a few weeks off. Right. So I try and, what do you do? You have an approach when you train actors when they're not not for a role. Do you do you do something similar? Do you well, or do you create goals for them? It depends, again, it depends on the person, right? I mean, if somebody that I see all the time and they're just like consistent, like I, I remember I was training um, a big po- uh, pop star guy and he was not shooting a video or doing anything at the time, but you know, he's just living his famous life. And uh, he, so I, I met him, he brought me upstairs. He goes, oh, I want to show you something. This is our you know, when he first started, it was he and his assistant. I was like, okay. So she, they brought me upstairs to his closet, opened the closet door and, um, he, he takes out these pants and he shows me all these like very, um, thanks babe. He shows me all these like stick, small, like, you know, cigarette pants. And this guy is like a strong, he looks like a sprinter. He has like a sprinter's body. Right. And, I'm looking at this and he says, okay, this is what I want to fit into. I want to wear these all the time. Wow. And, and I, and I said, oh, okay, well, I just, I'm just going to give you my feedback just right now. Um, you have an ass, like you have glutes that are like, and I said this to him, like a sprinter. And I'm like, the pants that you want to wear are pants for somebody who, who is a heroin chic uh, rock star from the seventies that have no body because they have no, you know, I'm like, so I want to work towards your goal of what you want, but I also want to be realistic with you that you're, I'm not going to be able to get rid of your ass. Mm. Like, like, you know, this is, this is so, but I said, but we could definitely work towards what you want, but I just want to be realistic with you that showing me these pants and telling me that you want this, your, if your body type is not that. Yeah. It isn't. So, I did work with him for a little bit. Um, he just, 
you know, I didn't think it was like necessarily the right fit. I kept on feeling crazy when I was working with him because he kept on telling me, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to create any muscle. And I'm like, dude, I, you already have so much muscle. I'm not creating anything. But so there was a big disconnect with, I think what his goals were and what I really, patiently, yeah. you know, but I feel like you need to be honest with people and you need to be, because that's what people respond to in this business and our business is that if you're a liar and you are just saying yes to people because you want to work with them, but you're not really helping them, then you also don't have longevity in the business in that way, you know? So, um, you know, I, I, I am very realistic with people and I definitely help them to uh, get closer to what they want. But I also am like, let me, again, it goes back to the same thing. Let me just explain to you why. Yeah. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying, look, you're, you were born with glutes, which is what everybody wants, but you already have. People are going to hire you. They're they're not just hiring you because they know you can get results, but they want your expertise in terms of you've trained all these people thousands and thousands of people so you have a good understanding of what looks good on different people as well you're not just there as like a machine right you know and you're there to your valued opinion that's why people pay me I, I charge a lot and it's because I know what looks good in certain movies or for fashion shows or whatever so I say no I think you're wrong here I think you should do this and this with your arms not that you know and I think that's what people pay for to actually me lead and actually say what looks good sometimes not just because People don't always know what looks good. They're like, I just want to be more toned. I want to get more muscular. It's like, well, do you really? If you, or if you want to get skinny, but if you look skinny with your bone structure, you'll look shit in your face. The way your bone like, structure oh. is, you won't look good. Right. You'd look better if you lost maybe four pounds. If you've lost eight, you wouldn't. You actually look less attractive. And I think people, me just being Agreed. honest about that objectively, is why people kind of would trust me because they're paying for that experience, not just me going, oh yeah, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Like in the start of my career, I was like, you know, the first ten years. I was like you, just learning. And then the next 10 years after that, it was like, you know, you, you, you learn to... Set boundaries. Initially, yeah, you set boundaries. And you, and you sort of only recently, last sort of seven, eight years, I've become like, no, that's not happening. This is, we're going to do it this way because I know more than you. Right. I mean, I, 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 I used to say to someone, I'm like, look, last time I looked, you came to me. I mean, it's just like, you just yeah. came to me. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, you know, you were asking about like with clients and keeping... Uh, if, if they want to stay in shape or how, how, how to motivate them. Um, this, I mean, this doesn't have to do with him uh, post his movie, but this was an interesting, this was an interesting story that um, the movie Fox Catcher, which was like, years oh, yeah. ago, right. So. Carell and, um, yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And um, uh, who ended up playing the part was Ch- Channing Tatum. Yeah. 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 Great film. So, so when it first started, right, um, Bennett Miller, who was the director, had been reaching out to different trainers. To mm-hmm. see, it was originally Ryan Gosling who was playing this part, and yeah, you um, train Ryan, right? Didn't you yeah, train Ryan for yeah. this? Ah, so, really? What was so interesting was the the way that they went about it was the director was looking for different trainers, right? They're interviewing different trainers, then. Then that he so then and then and then he would select a couple and then we ended up having to be interviewed with Ryan and then they ended up hiring me and they hired me. Um, but what was so interesting was that Bennett had sent pictures picture. of wrestlers from the eighties, and he said he needs to look like a authentic wrestler from the eighties, not now, not an MMA fighter now, because back in the eighties it was a completely different look, which I thought was such an in- fascinating goal you know, yeah. make it specific to the time. Um, yeah. but Ryan had to wrestle. So I had to bring on a wrestling coach. I had to bring up because Ryan was not a wrestler. Um, and not a wrestler at all. Not at all. Like the opposite of a wrestler. Yeah. And it was just, it, and I actually don't know exactly why he ended up not, you know, why he ended up not doing it or pulling out, uh, midway, but, um, you know, I mean, it was a huge physical commitment to doing to doing this. What, what's the rest in the eighties? Is it just a lot bulkier? Is it? Is it a lot like thicker neck? They looked bigger. They didn't look as ripped. Um, yeah, it didn't. They it did because it didn't look like they were lifting, like they were benching and stuff like that. So it didn't look like a proportionate body. It looked. Yeah. It looked a lot more lat heavy to me at the time. From really big lats, really big traps, I imagine. And, yeah, and thick, real kind of a thicker look. And and the two, yeah. and they, he was uh, looking, supposed to look like one of the brothers, or both of the brothers, uh, one of the brothers that were the wrestlers. Mark Ruffalo, wasn't it? It's Mark Ruffalo played the other brother. Yeah. yeah. 
Yes, exactly. Um, so I thought that was so fast. I mean, that was such a great, uh, you know, challenge to do that. Um, but you know, I mean like, and, and by the way, that's another thing, right? It's like, if you have a bad reputation and you are, don't, you don't return calls, you're not on it. You're, you, it, you can't work in this environment, people. I mean, this is what I mean. It's like, it's beyond just being a trainer. You have to be a business person. You know, mm. you have to, you have to conduct yourself like you're also in a, a business outside of it because there's a lot that rides on. I mean, you know, Dan, it's like, you, you, it's okay. This is what it comes down to. It comes down to the word self regulation. And if you don't know how to self regulate, uh, you can't be you. You can't be at that level because no one's going to tell you. Okay, Dan, we're hiring you to be on set. Okay, you're going to train Ryan today. Uh, we're shooting from ten in the morning until nine at night. All right, we'll see you there at two o'clock. Well, well whatever your calls it to, at nine a.m. And then you have no other instruction. So it's like. You need to now figure out when are you guys training? What's going on? Where are you going to work out? What does Ryan want to do or whoever? You know, I mean, there's, and you can't be annoying. You can't ask too many questions. You need to be an asset, not a liability. Don't be a pain in the ass. You know, I mean, like, there's so many things that go into being part of a team and working at this level that I, I work with trainers all the time to explain that. It's like you have to look at the bigger picture with everything. So I've got a couple, of, I know it's been quite a while, I've got a couple of things before I, I let you go. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, just sort of touching on there, because I know I've seen recently you set up your, I forget what it's called now, like a, like a mentor. I know you've been mentoring trainers for the many, many years. Coaching crew. Coaching. Now, is that something you want to move more into in terms of helping trainers out? Oh, yes. So I have been yeah. privately coaching trainers with their businesses for years yeah. um, where, uh, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And... It's like a gift I have. I love it because I also operate from the mentality that there is so much abundance. I don't need, I don't feel afraid to tell you everything that I've learned to help you be a successful, you know, trainer and doing everything that I, I did wrong to do it right. So I created this group about a year ago called the Intuitive Coaching Crew. And we have a, a Instagram presence that we work with for all social media part of it. But then I also do the private coaching. And yes. um, it is, and I'm actually just about to launch uh, our new page with it and all of this new information with the Intuitive Coaching Crew. But you're going to grow this as a brand, are you? Or as a, as a business? Yes. And actually, um, it is going to be, this is actually going to be a five part course that is going to be for sale um, online through uh, a company called Inspire360 that I will be launching all of this. Um, and then we're going to be moving that. So it's actually going to be a CEC. Nice. So I will be able to, this is going to be an education as well. So people can purchase yeah. it and then learn about the business side. Because here's what's missing. Yes, you can become ACE. You can be NASM. You could be a strength conditioning sports, whatever. You could do all of that. But there is nowhere that you can get a book, you can read a thing that's going to tell you all of the back end stuff of things that nobody talks about, you know? And, and I remember for me that this started like way, way, way back. I, right. Oh, actually when I was going to first tour with Christina, there was nowhere for me to ask anybody, what should I charge going on the road? I remember this. I was like, what? I don't. Yeah. I, don't, I remember I, having that problem when I first went away abroad with client. I was like, what the hell do I charge them? I have no we, idea. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I remember there was one trainer that I worked with who was Bette Midler's trainer. This is, again, years and years ago. And I remember her name was Sujin, and she trained Bette. And I remember she told me that she charged her uh, X amount of dollars while she was on the road with her. And I was like, oh, okay. So that helped give me like a perspective of like, okay, where I could come in and start negotiating and doing all that. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. There's so much stuff on the other side that like you, only you know, Dan, and only I know from people who've been doing this this long that you can't find anywhere. So that's what I'm doing is I am spreading all of that information and I'm, and everything that I did wrong, all the thousands of dollars. No, I, I love did. that. No, I've just found in my own career, I've got increasingly interested in helping other trainers out and I've, I've written qualifications and stuff and I'm, I'm finding it more uh, fulfilling. Yes. Helping particularly like, Particularly trainers who are not brand new trainers. Trainers have been around for like 10, 15 years and they're stuck in their career. They're the ones I like. They've got their own teams. They're doing quite well, but they've hit a plateau where they want to go to that next level. But they've put the hours in. They've been there 10,000 hours. 
that's the ones I like working with because the ones who just started, I'm like, yeah, just, just live in a gym for 10 years first because you just have to get good first. Exactly. Well, of course, exactly. And I, and we have people from all different levels of their careers. I mean, I have people that I work with that are gym owners that have been, had their gyms for years. I have people who are, have been trainers for a very long time who have hit a, hit a wall, people who are starting. So trainers who are listening to this, they can join this or do they have to apply? Yeah. Well, so, so if you want, so the intuitive coaching crew page, you can direct message me on there and then I will kind of g- tell you what the walkthrough is of it. But everybody starts with me first privately coaching. And then once they do private coaching with me, then they go through uh, that process and then they're part of the group. So when they are on Instagram, you do not feel like you're alone. We are a huge group of people that we all support each other through organic, smart engagement. Um, so it also is a very um, smart Instagram side of it that helps the visib- visibility of your page. Um, so commenting on each other's stuff and supporting each other publicly. Exactly. Well. exactly. And, and, and really I was clever. doing all that. So it's really supportive. And um, I would love to have you on, Dan, sometime with the group to uh, do a talk because I have to, yeah. you are like, like I, I said before, I'm like, no, you me in a male version? <laughs> 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 very, uh, very kindly i i want to finish with a couple of questions which i didn't ask from yeah, um a couple of people one is uh, felinda in miami she asks how do you maintain your muscular definition she's very impressed with your body it's because i i don't I don't, I don't eat, first of all, I don't, all, I don't eat anything, anything that has partially hydrated oil, 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 oil in it. So I don't have, so a, I don't have, a, I don't have a lot of inflammation on my body. That's, that's why you why notice a lot. A lot. Uh, you see, uh, you I see guess, it. more definition. I'm not a crazy person with like my macros and all that. I just have a general sense of, because it's like my SOS food plan um, is basically my basis of how I eat, which is like, you know, a uh, colorful food that has some texture to it. I don't, I, I'm very anti-inflammatory. So I take turmeric every day, um, I roll out, I foam roll every day and I rebound almost every day. And that I feel is, I mean. You're rebounding for like lymph or for yes, cardio or. For, so lymph, for lymphatic, for your lymphatic system, cardiovascularly, it's, um, it's excellent for digestion. It's excellent for depression. Um, it's uh, a, a really good way of like, because w- that's a big thing, right? Is circulation. The reason why I, I think people feel stagnant a lot of times or they're like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't have um, definition is because your body is actually really tight or inflamed. So I would, I would actually do both. But that's, I've been a foam roller and teaching it and preaching it forever. I have a beautiful free guide that's available on my Instagram page that anybody can download if they've yeah, never. I've directed a few people on there. It's, um, it's ashleyborden.com, right? Is that right? Yeah, my website is ashleyborden.com, or you can get all the same information on Ashley Borden Fitness on Instagram as well. Oh, yeah. And final question I have for you. This is from Gusharon from the Midlands. Yeah. She's asked a similar kind of thing. How have you adapted your training as you've aged? So we know you got into barbells when you sort of hit 40, which was a, a few weeks ago. But um... <laughs> Dan, well, I will tell you what. Guess what? This March, you know what? I'm going to be 50. That's mental. You look amazing. Thank you. Um, I feel amazing. Um, yeah. J Lo's my. For that, for that Instagram picture of you, where you show you like, is it like 30 and 40, mm-hmm. 47 or something, where your body is clearly better every like 10 years? And it was really like, like hot as fuck when you started. So it's amazing. It's like. Thank you. Share, share your secrets. I know you shared a lot, but. Okay, but I will tell you. I, I, it. Yeah. I swear to God, girls, this is what it is. It's called lifting weights heavier. Okay. That is a huge thing for me. Um, if I don't lift and I don't, you know, incorporate the lifting heavier, I start losing the six pack feeling because I, my, my core doesn't feel as tight and as strong, which makes my whole body feel more upright. Um, foam rolling. I'm going to go back to that again. (laughs) Foam rolling is longevity. Okay. You can't just lift and lift and lift and work out and lift and never recover. So I'm very big on recovery as well. As you get older, your body's like, F off in the morning if you are not, you know, thinking about recovery. And if you lifted really hard or worked out the day before, you have to recover. So I would say as I've gotten older, I've added more recovery to my yeah. workout uh, or my, my day. Um, I am 
very, I, I would say when I have like taking EFAs, like taking Udo's oil, essential fatty acid, I'm very big on um, Udo's oil, which is a 369 blend. And that actually they have it in where you are too. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and the rebounding. So, so my rebound, so, okay. Rebounding on the, like the, I use these uh, Bellicon rebounders that I've used forever. And the reason why I use just that is because of the bungees and the pressure on your body. So when if you rebound on stuff that has like um, springs in it, it's not the same type of resistance on your body that that bungees are. So rebounding is also so much better on your face. If you run a lot outside on the hard pavement. Runner's face. It, it, yeah. Runner's face. Yeah. Mommy's not about runner's face over here. So I am on a rebounder because of my face. Um, and by the way, your people can get $50 off a rebounder. It's on my <laughs> link. It's in my bio link if they ever want it. Do you have like a guide to rebounding or like a YouTube stuff and rebounding? Because I, I was talking with, um, you know, Suki, who I, I was trying to get you to see at some point. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a rebounder in a flat and I was training online in Zoom and she's like, oh, let's do some rebounding. And I just refused because I've never done it. And I'm like, honey, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't. I mean, honestly, you know what you do on the rebounder? You, uh, three things. I do high knees, running in place. I do jumping jacks. I do rotation. You don't need to reinvent. I'm charging my money for bouncing up and down in front of me. It's like when I don't know what I'm doing, I just feel weird. I so that's that's why you have, have you have ethics. But honestly, <laughs> I do use it as like, um, I, I do use it as like, um, you know, like if, if we had to do like a 30 second blast. I'd put them on the rebounder for like high knees for 30 seconds or like, you know, I, I use it in a rotation, um, a lot or it's such a, because it's such good cardio okay. uh, and you don't need, you don't, this is the thing about the rebounder. You don't necessarily have to like, you know, thing when people are like, I'm holding a leg and I have an arm up. No, you guys just, you know how to do it, what you do on the floor, right? If you run in place on the floor, you do that on the rebounder. If you, if you, if you jump higher on the rebounder, like with a jumping jack, it's more lymphatic. Yeah, that's the difference, right? It's more lymphatic. And then rotation, like if you're jumping and you're rotating or punching, like you punch, she punches. I mean, I know, I know you're like, I'm not, not unless I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not but doing that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to be, you don't need to do cheese ball shit on it. Like I use it for like real cardio blast stuff. Um, I know like my boyfriend, when he was watching a soccer game, he just ran on it for an hour. Yeah, that sounds more what I'll do on it. <laughs> yeah. It's been it's a really, really good. Um, I am not about wasting money, and I get very upset when we talk before about people who are told to buy shit that is like, "What are you doing? You don't need to you know spend." That's that. Another thing I like about your website, I think you added it, I think a year ago or so. Yeah. I am, but you put like Amazon links of things like products and stuff you yeah. use. So it's not yeah. things you like you've created, but things you use regularly and you share. I love that. I think it's a really nice Thank touch. You. Yeah, thank you. But that's but it is you. It's it's exactly the stuff that I've used for years. By the way, it's not like I I haven't probably the same stuff that I've used for a very long time. But like you don't need to spend. Uh, look, I I don't believe in spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on treadmills. You know, I mean, I'd rather you invest some of that money and buying some other stuff that you might need, um, unless you're like living in Alaska and you can't run outside ever. But you know, I mean, like a rebounder is not as expensive as a tree treadmill but it's it's such it also brings you a lot of joy and happiness it's fun all right everyone get rebounding i love it. okay outside <laughs> of that but i would but you know i would also say that you know you just want to make sure you're doing stuff that you like don't if you're doing something that you hate and it feels like a punishment all the things that i do for training i enjoy yeah. and i enjoy but there is a physiological and a science reason for uh, the things that I'm doing and why I like them. And also like, you know, why I'm going to be 50 and I'm still a fucking hot bitch. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I could talk to you for like hours, but I think we have to wait. We've been an hour and quarter. I'll let you have to get on with your job because I can't afford your hourly rate. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, we will do 40 more of these. Okay. So we all can right. make them all. Yes. Oh, that was fun, wasn't it? I always like chatting to Ashley. She's always got good advice and good energy and definitely check her out. Now, one thing I want to kind of finish on, uh, I guess the fact that both Ashley and I mentor a lot of trainers, it's worth me mentioning this because I imagine there are some trainers listening to this right now. Please focus on what you've got going on now rather than always thinking about the future. So many 
trainers I know as sort of fitness entrepreneurs focus so much about what they haven't got and they need to get more followers, need to get this, need to build a list, build a funnel, need to get this. It's like, no, just remember that it's a privilege to be a personal trainer and actually help people and people pay for you to give advice. It's literally the best job in the world. And I think there's a danger of focusing too much to the future, which usually means things you haven't got and forgetting to enjoy the present. And the more you're present with your clients and actually focus on your the business you have right now, not just the business you want, I think the more your business will grow because you'll grow it steadily with integrity. It's much more important to get good than it is to get famous. And ironically, I mean, look at Ashley's career, look at my career. We work with amazing people, our careers are fantastic because we've spent our time focusing on being great coaches, not on being great brands. That kind of stuff comes later. So please, any coaches listening to this, please just focus on your qualifications, on your skills. Take clients on which are difficult, which you don't want to take on. That's how you'll learn. You know, do qualifications, do courses, go on workshops, study, study, study. And remember, it's a huge honor to be a coach, to actually help people. People are giving you like an hour of their time, a time maybe like four or five hours a week, maybe more. That's a huge honor to have another human who's like listening to you. You owe it to them that you know what you're talking about and you make sure you don't just get them fit, but you lead and you inspire them. So, so yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of going off another rant and I don't know why because we've just done like an hour and a half talk. I can't imagine anyone's listening to this. But uh, I think in future episodes, I may talk about the business side of personal training. I think that might be quite interesting, but not for a while, maybe in a few months. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I have a favor to ask. If you've managed to listen this far, I would really appreciate review. So if you go to Apple Podcasts and search for the MX Podcast, I would love a review. I'd like it to be positive, but even if it was, you know, really shit, I still like your feedback. It's all good for me. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next Wednesday for a surprise. See you then. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the MX Podcast. All feedback, reviews and social shares are very much appreciated. To find out more about the Methodology X Online Members Club, our award-winning MX Group Fitness Classes, or to join our global family of MX instructors, please visit danrobertsgroup.com.